Hello, welcome to Weathersfield Proctor Library Storytime. I'm Glenna Coleman, Youth Services Librarian, and this is our library bear, Bear. He has been telling me that now that spring is here, there's an awful lot of noise around the library with birds singing and trucks going by and all those kinds of things. And so today I thought I might read some stories that have noises in them. Well, our very first story that has noises is a story called Good Night, Good Night Construction Site. This is written by Sherry Desky Rinker and Tom Lichtenheld. Good Night, Good Night Construction Site. Now, this book is a rhyming book, so I'm going to stop periodically and see if you can fill in the word. Good night, good night, construction site. Look at that, we have the moon going to sleep on that construction site. All those eye beams going up. Down in the big construction site, the tough trucks work with all their might to build a building, make a road, to get the job done, load by load. Well, you're doing great so far. The sun has set, the work is done, it's time for trucks to end their fun. So one by one they'll go to bed to yawn and rest their sleepy heads. Then wake up to another day of rough and tough construction play. Working hard to help his team, Crane Truck raises one last beam. Reaching, stretching, lifting high, he swings the beam into the sky. He'll set it down right on its mark, then off to bed. It's almost dark. He slowly folds his boom back in, and then with one last sleepy grin, he tucks himself in nice and tight, <sighs> then cuddles up and says good night. Shh, good night. Spinning, churning all day long, Cement Mixer sings his whirly song. Now yawn, he's weary and so dizzy from the fun that keeps him busy. With one last spin, he pours the load. He's ready now to leave the road. He takes a bath, gets shiny bright, pulls up his chute, turns off his light. He cuts his engine, slows his drum, and dreams sweet dreams of twirly fun. Shh, good night, cement mixer. Good night. Dump truck loves to work and haul. He carries loads both big and small. He moves the dirt from place to place, then dumps it with a happy face. One final load spills on the heap. Crunch! Now dump truck's tired and wants to sleep. He lowers his bed, locks his gate, rests his wheels. It's getting late. He dims his lights, then shuts his doors, and soon his engine slows to snores. Shh, good night, dump truck, good night. This man over here is yelling, hey, pipe down. <laughs> I guess he wasn't happy with the noise. Pushing with his mighty blade, bulldozer works to smooth the grade. He clears the way to level ground and fills the air with thunderous sound. Roar! 
No one's as tough and strong as he, but now he's sleepy as can be. He puffs some smoke out of his stack, turns off his engine, stops it, track. He curls into his soft dirt bed and dreams of busy days ahead. Shh, good night, bulldozer, good night. Scooping gravel, dirt, and sand, excavator shapes the land. He digs and lifts throughout the day. Arr! But now it's time to end his play. A few more holes to dig and soon he'll roll to bed beneath the moon. He twirls upon his bumpy track, pulls up his boom, stretches his back. He sets his scoop down to the ground and snuggles up without a sound. Shh, good night, excavator. Good night. These big, big trucks so tough and loud, they work so hard, so rough and proud. Tomorrow is another day, another chance to work and play. Turn off your engines, stop your tracks, Relax your wheels, your stacks and backs. No more lifting and puffing, team. It's time to rest your heads and dream. Construction site, all tucked in tight. The day is done. Turn off the lights. Great work today. Now, shh. Good night. All right. This book was Good Night, Good Night Construction Site. Sorry, we're getting a bit of glare there. It's by Sherry Dusky Rinker and Tom Lichtenheld. Well, there were lots of sounds in that story. Our next story is about no room for a sneeze. This is a folktale retold by Robin Suprainer, and it's illustrated by Irene Trevas. Now, this might not be so much about sound as about space for sound. No room for a sneeze. Once, a long time ago, a man lived with his wife and their seven children. They lived in a small village, on a small farm, in a very small house. With them lived a dog, three cats, and a goldfish. Well, I'm guessing with seven children and three dogs, a dog and three cats, it's very noisy. Let's keep reading and find out. Sometimes it was peaceful and quiet, but most of the time it was not. The dog chased the cats, the cats chased the goldfish, the children chased each other, and the man and his wife fussed and scolded from sunrise to sunset. At last, the unhappy, unhappy couple complained to their friend. You must go to the wise man, they said. He alone can help you. So the man and his wife climbed the hill to the house of the wise man. They stood before him and told him their story. There is not room to turn around, said the man. I cannot bend to tie my shoelace. If only our house were bigger. Hmm. So much noise, said the woman. Such yapping, such yammering, it's worse than a circus. The wise man closed his eyes. He listened, then he asked one simple question. Tell me, are there animals on your farm? 
The man and his wife grew puzzled. They had not climbed the hill to speak of animals. But the woman said, We have some hens and a rooster, and some ducks and a goose, said the man. The wise man clapped his hands. He tugged his beard. He tapped the side of his nose. Then he said, Go home, my friends, and take the ducks and the goose and the hens and the rooster into your house to live with you. Oh my goodness, that sounds a little strange. I'm not quite sure about that advice. The man and his wife couldn't believe their ears, but they did as the wise man said. Now try to imagine the uproar. Chicken squawking, the rooster cock-a-doodling, ducks quacking, the goose honking, feathers flying, and don't forget the children. The noise, the clutter, night and day, day and night, things were worse than ever. The woman sent her husband back to the wise man. Wow, if it were that noisy in the house, I would go myself, just for a break. Dear wise man, he wept, what can we do? Now the house is so crowded, there's not room for a sneeze. The wise man looked at his fingers. He looked at his toes. Tell me more about your farm, he said. There's a mule to pull the wagon, said the man. Aha, said the wise man, jumping to his feet. Go home and take your mule in the house to live with you. Where, cried the poor man. But the wise man waved his hand. He would say no more. Are you crazy, yelled the woman when her husband led the mule into their house. She hurled a pink petunia at his head. Husband, have you lost your wits? The wise man has spoken, replied her husband, and he went to get straw for the mule. The children rode the mule around the kitchen. They dressed it in their father's coat and in their mother's hat. The husband ran back to the wise man. Help me, he cried. My hair is falling out. My wife will not speak to me. Only a miracle can save us. Do you have a cow? asked the wise man. The poor man nodded. Good, said the wise man. Bring her into the house to live with you. With tears rolling down his cheeks, the man led the cow into the house. When the cow was milked, the dog upset the bucket. The woman sat on the hen's eggs. The mule broke the dishes. The children cried and squabbled. The man and his wife did not know what to do. Go back to the wise man, cried the woman. Tell him he is ruining our lives. Hmm. You are ruining our lives, cried the husband. You wouldn't believe what our house has become. The hens roost in my chair. The cow is eating the curtains. The noise, the smell. Do something. There is a beggar in your village, said the wise man. Invite him to come and live with you. Oh my goodness. When the man came home with the beggar, his wife almost fainted. When supper was served, the beggar ate it all. He would not sleep on the floor with the animals, but took the bed of the husband and his wife. The very next morning, the husband ran back to the wise man. He held out his hands. He tried to talk, but he could not. Things are terrible, said the wise man. The poor man mumbled, yes. You and your wife are miserable, said the wise man. Yes, said the poor man. Yes, I have found another home for the beggar, said the wise man. Go home and tell him to leave. The man went home with the good news. His wife packed a lunch for the beggar. They waved as he went down the road. That night, the man and his wife slept in their own bed. How very good it felt. The next day, when the goose flew into the baby's cradle and wouldn't come out, the man left the house again. He stood before the wise man. The time has come for the animals to return to the barn, said the wise man. Go home now, now my friend. Go in peace. The man took the mule back to the barn. The woman led the cow away. The children shooed the ducks and hens and goose. The rooster crowed and flapped up to the roof. Then the man and his wife cleaned and scrubbed and polished their little house. The children picked flowers and set them on the table. What a beautiful house we have, they said. So quiet, so comfortable, so roomy.
Then happily, they all sat down and had supper. <laughs> well, I guess maybe there was room for a sneeze in that house after all. No Room for a Sneeze was a folktale retold by Robin Sopraner and illustrated by Irene Travas. Wow, that was quite a noisy story in the end. All right, we have one more story by John Bergerman, and it's called Splat. I wonder if you can guess what noise is going to be in this book. Splat, John Bergerman. What happens when you turn the page? Splat! Good work! What will happen this time? Splat! That's right! Congratulations! Splat! That wasn't very funny, was it? Splat! I'm getting hungry. Are you? Splat! Who else likes sandwiches? We do. I prefer tacos. Squish! We love insect sandwiches. Squash! Yum! Gobble! Burp! Munch! What a mess! Splash! Oh, there's a fan. That doesn't seem like a very good idea. Whoosh! No more splats, right? Right? We got everyone ice cream. Splat. Well, there was definitely a lot of splatting in this book. This was John Bergman's book, Splat. Well, Bear, I hope you enjoyed our stories with different sounds in them. This was Glenna Coleman, Youth Services Librarian at the Weathersfield Proctor Library. We hope you can join us again for story time. Till next time.